Well, hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show. Welcome, friends, to today's program. We are indeed thankful to be here. Uh, this past week, we had a fabulous, fabulous 4th of July celebration out in Johnstown, Colorado. And trust me, if you didn't make this one, you still got time to plan ahead for the Labor Day celebration because these are unexcelled events. The nicest group of people on the face of the earth, you will not find nicer or more concerned patriotic Americans. We had a wonderful time. The prayer breakfast, the Civic Center was full. Uh, at the Later at the park, we had uh, quite a bit larger crowd than we had last year, which leads me to, to understand that there are concerned people. And we're so thankful that we can be here with you again. You know, this is the G3, and a lot of people in our own government, Ms. Feinstein, Hillary Clinton, Chucky Schumer, Teddy Kennedy, uh, Dick Gephardt, Al Gore certainly could be a part of our government again, are very uncomfortable with us having guns like this because their police state can never be fully realized as long as we have guns like this or this 1911 and of course this week at the evil United Nations in New York and we've got some commemorative uh, we're going to celebrate the UN, the evil UN's uh, enclave this week on trying to figure out how they're going to disarm us. That's you and I, friends, as gun-owning Americans. Yes, we've got our cricket chorus in the background here, but that's all right. Wonderful day to be outside shooting. It's hot every July. You know, the birds and, and uh, the crickets come out this time of day and start carrying on. We're glad to have them, though. You know, I've got a flag here that got us kicked off the Outdoor Channel Network. And this is the only United Nations, or certainly evil United Nations flag that I'm in favor of. This one here that says, no more United Nations. Because friends, we've been saying, it's like I said, this flag right here and me having a gun like this, sitting in front of this flag, is what got us kicked off the Outdoor Channel Network. They said, Johnny, we don't want that. You can't be saying things like that. Well, it's time somebody said it. Because these folks are not just coming after these guns, they're coming after these guns. Double barrel shotguns, anything that goes bang, they're going to set up a plan to take everything that goes bangs away from us as Americans. Everything. Revolvers are specifically mentioned. They are mentioned in the treaty formation that the evil UN is working on. Revolvers, pistols, shotguns, you name it. Now, friends, it's come down to it. If we're going to stop these people, when are we going to do it? You know, we talked to people in the shooting industry 10 years ago. We started the program 11 years ago when we were doing the groundwork 12, 13 years ago. Nobody was concerned. As we have continued to talk to people, the industry people, so many of the shooters, some of the largest organizations, not concerned. Not concerned. I've been to hunting camps and people said, I don't vote. Yeah, right. Well, that means we're going to let someone else make a decision on how we're going to run our lives. Well, friends, if we're going to get active, if we're going to do it, when are we going to do it? When is a better time than today? I can tell you a better time would have been yesterday or last year or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. But we're stuck with today. A lot of people need to make some decisions to get off the sofa and get active because we need every able-bodied American, able-minded American who will join this struggle with us to keep our firearms in bed by keeping our freedom. And friends, I can't think of a better, a better target than a nice blue water bottle to commemorate this week. But friends, it has come down to it. And if we lose these guns, you know, they're not able to own black powder guns in England now. Of course, crime rate's gone way up. Well, you know, we have two points of view. That there are enough good and responsible people to warrant self-government, self-determination, decide what's right for their lives. And there will always be a small percentage of people that are not trustworthy and are not going to be responsible. But you know what? There are enough of us who are to make the difference. 
the opposing viewpoint is that everyone and everything must be controlled down to the last iota, to the last period, to the last moment, because no one can be trusted by the authority to be responsible for themselves. You know, friends, we're descendants of the people that came here to escape the European tyrannies and Asian tyrannies and African tyrannies. Yes, they were tyrannies in Africa. Let's hope and pray that there are enough of us who understand the issues that are willing to invest a little time, a little effort into the cost of freedom. Let's hope they're all. That's why we're here. That's why we're on the radio. That's why we do what we do. That's why we struggle so hard to stay here. Friends, if you can help us stay on the air, please do. If you can make a donation to help us buy more airtime so we can stay here and keep these messages coming out, please do. Our standard address, 327 Irvin Rowland Road in Dublin, Louisiana, zip code 71024. You know, it says right here, oh, by the way, our song, of course, this is Sunday, the first time this runs. Our song about citizen of the earth, I ain't, is, uh, was played yesterday in front of the evil United Nations building. Larry Pratt uh, took some CDs up there. They, uh, they told me they're, they're going to use it as a theme song for their pro-gun rally in front of the evil UN. These CDs are available, only $12.95 right here from our program if you'd like to have one. But I can't think of a better time or a better place or a nicer, more deserving group that our songs played in front of. Can you? Yeah, this is the one we want right here. It says, no more United Nations. That's the one we want. We got some footage from our, from our picnic that we're going to be showing you a little bit later. We're short on time as always. Second Amendment says, a well-regulated militia. Who's militia? It's us. All of us. It's what George Mason said. The founding fathers, the framers said the militia is all of us. So it's being necessary to the security of a free state. Notice that did not say police state. It said to a free state. The right of the people. It didn't say the right of the state. Right of the National Guard. National Guard wasn't even, didn't come along until 1916. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Let's start another shooting show. That blue just makes such a nice and easy to see uh, covering on those water bottles. Remember it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms what you call two for one. 460 is brutal on those bottles. Shall not be infringed. Sounds clear to me, doesn't it you? Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
Friends, this is the new Georgia Arms 20th anniversary catalog. Of course, has our a memorial there to our good friend Jim Clark there on the cover. This is a terrific catalog from the finest ammunition maker in the United States. They have all kinds of great prices on all sorts of ammunition. 243 Winchester, 270s, uh, 7.62 by 39 Russian, uh, all kinds of great stuff. They've even got 308 tracers, 30 out six tracers, uh, all kinds of neat stuff here in this great new Georgia Arms catalog. They have components if you want to load your own ammo and look here we've got the shooting show in our new 460 rolling kit on sale as well. Georgia Arms has the best prices for custom grade ammunition that I'm aware of in the United States and guess what else they're helping to support our shooting show. Friends give them a call today. Free phone call, free catalog 1-800-624-6861 1-800-624-6861 Georgia Arms and please remember to tell them that you heard it and saw it here on our program. Friends, what we're looking at here is some black powder and you'll see this is the standard black powder that many of us are, this is a double F actually, uh, very common right here but next to it we have a really exciting development. This is something called clean shot powder which is black powder replacement and listen at this it is zero corrosive this is friends we have stumbled on a fantastic new product and this is the pellet that is also available and these come in 50 grain sizes many of the modern guns such as this inline muzzleloader we're going to talk about in a moment will use these pellets and friends they have hit on something this is again clean shot let me tell you a little bit about this stuff. Now friends, this is a Traditions muzzleloader. This is an inline muzzleloader. In fact, we've had, I think we've had this gun on the show before. And of course, the bolt here essentially is a shield for the ignition. And it is very humid down here. And you hear our chorus going in the background, but hey, we're outside on the range. It's in the afternoon. It's a great day to be out shooting. Exciting stuff here, friends. Many of us are familiar with black powder. And this is great and historic. Uh, stuff here, but let me tell you what, we've made a real discovery. One of our folks met the clean shot people this year at the SHOT Show and they were nice enough to send us some for testing. And typically, when we would shoot black powder in one of these guns, you know the rule of black powder. As soon as you get through shooting, you go clean your gun. And I mean you clean this thing front to back, inside the action, uh, rinse it out with water, certainly fluid film is the best cleaner and protectant I have ever seen. But you do it then because you leave a black powder gun with residue uh, uh, being fired overnight, uh, you will have a ruined barrel by the next day. It will be pitted, it's really going to ruin it. Guess what? This stuff's non-fouling. Now it does make some smoke, but it has no sulfur in it. In fact, they have replaced the sulfur with essentially vitamin C. <laughs> so. If you didn't get your vitamin C of the day, we'll just step forward and get a whiff, but it's amazing stuff. Clean shot powder is from, let's see, they're out of uh, Whitewater, Colorado, and you can find them on the internet at www.cleanshot.com, just like it sounds, cleanshot.com, and they have an 888 number also as well. And friends, this is a great discovery because one of the... It's giving us better velocity than an equal charge of black powder, but you know what? It does it with less recoil. No, I don't understand that. That means the pressure curve's got to be different. And think about these black powder revolvers that people enjoy going out and shooting. A lot of people shooting black powder cartridge revolvers now. Friends, this is the answer because now you don't have to soak your gun and dunk it, take the grips off. You can just clean it with water. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Just clean it with water if you want, or any good gun oil, but water's handy and it's inexpensive. This is a huge development because now uh, you can, you know, there are some places you can't even own real guns or have problem with, with modern smokeless type guns, but there may be a possibility that in some of those areas you could actually have black powder guns. I don't know, check your local laws. We don't advocate breaking the law. We advocate changing the law. We don't advocate breaking the law. Anyway. Uh, this loads like you would black powder 
it's a similar consistency, maybe a little more granular looking at double F there. But uh, the thing is, you're going to be able to go out and, believe it or not, instead of fouling, we'll shoot a couple of three, four rounds of black powder, maybe two or three. You better clean that barrel because it's going to be so fouled, it's going to be hard to get uh, your next patch ball or your next conical bullet down the bore. Not so. Shoot all you want to because the residue actually serves as a lubricant for the charge going down and coming back out. It's really amazing. It makes just a little white ash, very, very easy to clean up, 100% just non-corrosive. Great, great stuff. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. Seven years after the government's lethal assault on the Branch Davidians at Waco, the country still waits for justice to be rendered. David Hardy, a Tucson, Arizona attorney, has authored This Is Not an Assault, which is a fascinating account of his efforts to find out what really happened at Waco. Hardy has filed a series of Freedom of Information Act requests. Here inside the Beltway, we pronounce those as FOIA, in an effort to get to the bottom of the Waco tragedy. What he has uncovered is very damaging to the government's insistence that, except for a few honest mistakes, BATF and FBI agents did nothing wrong at Waco. Hardy has an eye for detail. When the BATF and FBI Waco reports were released, followed by the 1995 hearings, Hardy's eye for detail saw that the government's account of what happened at Waco did not add up. For example, photos of one of the victims who died in the fire that ended the siege of the Davidians were curious. The victim, Jimmy Riddle, had been photographed amidst the ashes of the fire, yet most of his body and clothes were not burned at all. Had his body been moved? And why? Hardy's FOIA's progressively revealed government perjury. The BATF denied that Koresh could have been arrested by nabbing him in town, even though plenty of witnesses saw him off the Davidians' property. In fact, BATF agents had gone shooting with Koresh nine days before the assault. Audio tapes made on the first day of the assault revealed the sound of shots being fired from helicopters that buzzed the Davidians. Sifting through the disclosures made to Hardy enabled him to state categorically that the Davidians did not ambush the BATF attackers and that the BATF fired first. Forward-looking infrared, pronounced FLIR, tapes were pried out of the government grudgingly. Denials that tapes existed were finally given up when Hardy was able to show that the government referred elsewhere to their existence. These tapes were made on the last day, the day of the fatal fire. Some 12 tons of evidence had been stored by the Texas Rangers. When an examination of some of that evidence revealed that Contrary to repeated denials, pyrotechnic rounds had been fired into the Davidians' building. The Justice Department sent federal marshals to the FBI's facility at Quantico, Virginia. The marshals took possession of FLIR tapes made from approximately 6 a.m. to 10.42 a.m., tapes that an FI, uh, FBI official had told Hardy in writing and under oath did not exist. Hardy was able to piece together a picture of two FBI's, one represented by the negotiators during the siege, and the other represented by the paramilitary hostage rescue team, the HRT. On at least three occasions, the negotiators had gotten the Davidians to agree to leave their building and surrender. Each time, the HRT foiled a peaceful solution by aggressive, offensive, and finally fatal behavior. The Waco siege ended in tragedy, Hardy found, because the FBI's HRT had run amok. This is not an assault 
by David Hardy is available from Gun Owners of America. And from Washington, this is Larry Pratt for Gun Owners of America. Friends, remember, Gun Owners of America is helping us to stay on the air. You can join by calling 888-886-4867. You can find them on the Internet at gunowners.org. Friends, we're up here at the top of our 100-yard range, top of the hill, and this is really exciting. I'm going to show you the components we're using. This is an inline traditions muzzleloader here in the background, and we have some of the new clean shot powder that's in pellets. Now these are 50 grain pellets right here and for accuracy we're going to use two of these pellets in the inline rifle. And it's been modified to accept the shotgun primers which are a little bit less expensive and these are just CCI uh, 209M shot shell primers and we're going to use that however uh, practice has it that the musket, there's really not much difference, if any, in the primer. Some of you are going to like shotgun primers because they are less expensive. You may already have them laying around. Friends, this is a huge development. This uh, clean shot powder, of course, uh, just gives almost no fouling. You just don't have to clean it between shots. In fact, after the, the shot is fired, the residue will, will actually lubricate the bore. Well, we're going to shoot for groups, and we have a target. We have one of our... Uh, United Nations, evil United Nations commemorative bottles we're going to take a shot at. Then we're going to run a group and this will give us a velocity with a 300 grain sabode uh, bullet uh, which are very common. You can get them. This is a 300 grain lead bullet which in the 50 caliber a lot of people think is probably one of if not the very best bullet weight. And let me show you how we're going to load it. We'll just put the bullet in the sabo there. Now let's load the gun. All we do is we just literally drop the pellet down the bore. It went all the way down. I like that without having to force it there. And now we'll put, we have our bullet already inserted in our sabo. We'll just put it in place. And I've got an old glove here that I'm going to use as my ball starter. Push it on down in the, in the bore there. There we go. Get it started. And we'll go ahead and push it all the way down against the pellets. I said, don't have a ball starter with this ramrod's got a kind of a sharp end, so we just had an old glove handy, handy for that. Okay, now then, we'll take our shotgun pellet and we'll put it inside. Friends, I'll remind you with a little bit of practice, you can get off literally two, three shots a minute with this arrangement. This is really a good system. We've got one of our volunteer evil UN commemorative targets down there. Let's see how it looks. And friends, you saw a little smoke. Yeah, well, it's a black powder substitute. I'll tell you what, that bottle vanished. Uh, you have a power level that is similar to a 30 out 6 except a much bigger bullet. A, in this case, a 45 caliber bullet in a 50 caliber Sabo running about 1,800 feet per second. With the maximum load, which will be three pellets, you're looking at about 2,150 feet per second and about 2,700 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Zero this thing for 100 yards and it's only going to drop a foot at 200 yards. For black powder, that's almost unheard of. I tell you what, friends, this is a huge development. Uh, well, friends, we have a little tool here to remove the shotgun primer, spent primer there, and it just, of course, falls out of the way. Now then, we're going to shoot it for groups. We have our paper target down there, and I'll remind you that if you zero this gun for three pellets, 2,150 feet per second, you zero at three inches high at 100 yards, guess what? That dude's going to be dead on at 200. So this gives us range. And of course, now in many places, the uh, scopes are legal for black powder hunting now. And I'll tell you what, this is versatility that we've never had. You go in the woods with this thing, I mean, we're talking deer or elk or even bear. 
uh, you're not underarmed. For more information on Clean Shot Powder, you can call them at 888-419-2073. Stay tuned for more of The Shooting Show after these important messages. stocks, for pistol grips, for regular stocks, for replacement stocks, for magazine extension tubes for your shotgun, for magazine replacement springs for your shotgun. How about the executive eye scraper, the executive letter opener, all from Choate Machine and Tube when you call for a free catalog. You can get the executive letter opener, a multi-purpose tool, or the executive eye scraper, a multi-purpose tool, for only your choice, only $2.00 when you call for a free choke catalog. You can get both of them for $4, a $10 value. Friends, if you're a shooter or a gun owner, you need one of the choke machine and tool company catalogs. Call them today, 1-800-972-6390. In Ball Knob, Arkansas, they're helping to support our project. You need one of their catalogs. Again, 1-800-972-6390. And please remember to tell them that you saw it here on our show. You know, the 44 Magnum is a great cartridge, but it has a lot of noise and a lot of recoil. Wouldn't it be nice to have the same power level in the slim and compact and lightweight 1911 style gun, same power level, not nearly as much or recoil. You can have it with our pistol kit. Here's the 45 Auto on a water bottle target. Now let's shoot the other target with the same gun fitted with our 460 Roland pistol kit. Or how about the power of this lever action rifle in a lightweight, handy semi-automatic carbine? The 460 Roland MechTech carbine conversion unit for the 1911 frame is only $345 plus shipping, and the 460 Roland pistol kit for the 1911 pistol is only $275 plus shipping. Now, friends, for our support group, we have custom leather work and saddlery in Denham Springs, Louisiana. We have Brooks Communication in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have Dennis Crocker Firearms Training, also Grass Information and League of the South Information there in South Carolina. We have Gearlings Equipment Rentals in Southern California. We have Mike and Sherry Harris Pilot Services and Consulting there in South Carolina. We'll see you on the next show. And friends, our gospel show is coming up next. Please stay with us. It's a show you don't want to miss.